Man, I got to tell you, this has been an exciting time for me. This My is just blessing. glorious. My blessing. God oh, is amazing. so good. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? There's no end. You know, I find there's no end to his mysteries. There's no end to how deep his word is. You know, a book is as deep as its author. There's no end to the book. There's no end to it. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's so amazing. It's, yeah. Hallelujah. Absolutely. And we are, we, we just, <laughs> this whole week, we've touched on the Harbingers. But one of the things we're going to do uh, is the, in the book, it's called The Mystery Ground. And this is a whole nother realm. And this is, this is this. When Israel was fully formed, you had, a, you had the king, Solomon, you had the temple was finished. The whole nation gathered in Jerusalem and they gathered to dedicate the temple and dedicate the future of Israel to God. And Solomon prayed, you read that whole, all those oh, chapters, yeah. prayed yeah, and Lord, yeah, if they yeah. fall away, do this and this happens, have mercy if they do this. And there's a whole, he's, he's praying for the nation's future again and again. And this was the dedication. Now, it was this temple mount. It was the sacred ground. It was where the prayers went up. It's where everything went up. But when later on, I mean, God was so patient. I mean, this is, this is like the 900s BC, but it, it was all the way to the 586 BC when finally judgment came. And this one, a nation went way off and he sent prophets and prophets. Finally, when the judgment came, Babylon came in, they went to the Temple Mount, destroyed the temple. The principle is that the, the destruction returns to the same ground mm -hmm. where the nation was dedicated yeah. to God. And, and the thing is, it happens there, and it's God is saying, hey, come back, nation. You know, this is where you made the covenant. This is where you were consecrated. Come back to me. Your only hope is there. So when they, they looked to the Temple Mount, they, there was a reminder from God of the covenant and a reminder that he was calling them back to come back to the foundation, back to where they were dedicated. So that's what happened. Now, could there actually be a parallel with America? Could this actually, this mystery, actually have been manifested in America? And here's the thing. America was fully constituted, you know, it was, independence was 1776, but when it became a fully constituted nation, as we know it today with a president over Congress and all that, was the year 1789. Mm -hmm. The day was April 30th, 1789. George Washington, the first president, is in the capital city. He puts his hand on the Bible and swears on the Bible to become president. He goes inside to Federal Hall, which is where the Congress was, and he delivers the first ever presidential address to America. Now, in that first ever address, often in the Bible, when you have beginning days or consecration days, you often have a prophetic warning. You have a blessing or a curse. You have that many times. Washington actually gives a prophetic warning to America. It's in the first ever presidential words. And he gives a warning of what would happen if we turn from God. And what he says is, and first of all, by the way, in that first speech, Washington gives glory to God. He says, all this came from God. Everything we have is from God. But then he says, he says this, the propitious smiles of heaven can never be expected on a nation that disregards the eternal rules of order and right, which heaven itself hath ordained. Washington is saying, America's blessings come from God. All blessings are from God. But if America ever turns away from God and disregards the eternal rules of order and right of heaven, then the, the smiles of heaven or the blessings of God will be removed from the land. That's the warning. He gives that warning. Then the first government of America, this is Washington, House of Representatives, Senate, Cabinet, all go on foot to perform their first act together. Now the first act of the American Congress together with the president wasn't to pass a bill or vote or argue, it was to pray. The very first act on the very first day was to pray and dedicate America to God and commit America's future to God. They go on foot to a place appointed to, to, for that service, for a spend about at least two hours praying and dedicating America's future to God. Now, here's the thing. This was America's consecration ground on its first day. This was the ground. If we can find out where it is, 
We have a mystery. Where was it? It was in the nation's capital. But the capital that day wasn't Washington, D.C. The That's capital right. was New York City, where it was, it was the lower Manhattan. It was the lower part of New York City. It was where exactly is America's consecration ground. America's consecration ground. America was dedicated to God on ground zero. Oh. Ground zero is our nation's dedication ground, our consecration ground to God. That's where it was on the first day. They were right there at ground zero. Mm -hmm. All that, the ancient mystery that, the, that the, the warning, the destruction returns to the same ground where the nation was dedicated to God in prayer. It returns there and on that day, a shockwave goes forth from ground zero, the dedication ground, and goes to the place where Federal Hall, where Washington gave the warning of what would happen if we ever turned away from God. And it strikes the foundation, you know, this Federal Hall, this is the foundation of America. It strikes the foundation of the foundation, puts a crack in the foundation of America. There on that day, where he gave the warning. But all around ground zero, all around ground zero, all the nations are, I mean, or actually all the buildings are ruined or destroyed except one. Only one is saved. And the one that is saved is the little stone chapel. And it, it's the little stone chapel where America was dedicated to God. The only place that was spared. It was right there, right there. And, and, and buildings that were farther away got destroyed. But they say the reason why it was saved, they called it the miracle of 9-11, was that there was an object that absorbed the brunt of 9-11 and shielded the church, shielded the church. What was the object? The object was the harbinger. It was the, it was the sycamore. The sixth harbinger saved the church. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio, here live via Skype with James Jacob Prash. Uh, Jacob, one of the believers who, who recently uh, watched one of our videos had the question, uh, based on Jonathan Kahn's Harbinger book, he made the observations uh, that Norman, uh, Mormons, excuse me, Mormons highly endorse this book and based on Jonathan Kahn's teaching of Isaiah 9.10, isn't it oxymoronic that a, a, a Messianic Jew would be teaching replacement theology or is he teaching replacement theology? Thank you for your question. Let me uh, reiterate something I've said before. I like Jonathan Kahn personally. Some of my family know him quite well. I have friends like Harry Weinbaum and so forth that go to his congregation. It's a Messianic congregation in the New Jersey suburbs of New York City. I don't dislike Jonathan. Now, theologically, I'm divided. He is right in the theme of his book, The Harbinger, that America and the West did not learn the lessons of September 11th or hear what God was saying. On the theme of the book, we're on the same page. I absolutely agree with him. On his hermeneutics, however, he's left a lot of people in the lurch. But oddly, almost inexplicably, he does use the hermeneutics of replacement theology in his treatment of certain scripture passages, including Isaiah 9. He also forgets that bad company corrupts good morals. When you get involved with somebody with no biblical right to be in ministry, like Jim Baker. We went up to the top of Mount Graham trying to investigate why the Vatican has astronomers up there studying deep space and why they had this battle. They, they fought in federal court against the Apache nation uh, to get the right to build on the top of that mountain. The Apache wanted us to know that that mountain is holy. It's one of the four holiest mountains in the world, and it is because it is a portal. It is a gateway. It's a, it's a location such as the Bible describes in several places where it mentions like Jacob's ladder. Yes. Jacob sees angels ascending and descending, and after that vision, it scares him so much that he gets out, he takes anointing oil, and he anoints the whole place. And people say that Jacob said, this is the house of God. But read it, that's not what he says. He says, there is a gate here to the house of God. Same thing with the Tower of Babel that we have talked about once before. Uh, the, the, the actual root words around that was, it's a gate, it's a doorway, it's CERN of the Old Testament, it's angelic science trying to figure out how to break through into our 
dimension to literally create hell on earth. Uh, and at the same time, here you've got the rabbi standing in front of the United Nations saying, hello, how come nobody is saying anything about the decimation of Christians around the world? What is this strange, weird si uh, silence all about, right? That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying is that this is another part of the spirit of the age. Wow. From and they, uh, I'm glad you mentioned the rabbi. Uh, did anybody see the, the rabbi speaking to the United Nations? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's on our website. It's on the Jim Baker Show dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, when, uh, Nobody is our enemy. You know, if I, when I speak of people, mm -hmm. it, they are not our enemy. We need to pray for them. The only thing we have to do is pray for them, speak truth and love. Yeah. Uh, we need to pray for salvation. Uh, this is going to be like, as with the harbinger, that there is a ancient template, an ancient mystery that links to the last days of Israel, links to mm -hmm. Israel's fall from God that is now replaying here. Now, it's going to be, you're going to see it in a whole other realm. And that is that, that it isn't that the people here, the leaders I'm going to speak about, are the people from, obviously, from the Bible. They're mm -hmm. not the same people. But they are, they are following the template. They are, they are playing a part. And they probably don't have no idea that they're doing it. Remember in the Harbinger, you had leaders you know, who were actually voicing judgment. You had Tom Daschle, you, who, who actually pronounces judgment on the nation. Mm -hmm. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. That is what we will do. Mm -hmm. He's saying the exact same things, the exact same words that the ancient leaders of Israel said. Now, he isn't the ancient leader, but he's stepping into the template. So the same thing we're going to see here now, okay? So with that said, let's begin. Now, first of all, right, and I'm gonna, the last thing is, I'm going to do this throughout my time here, throughout the week. So okay. another, we'll have other mysteries in between, but we're going to keep on going. until. So it's going to bring it all the way up till right now, okay? So the first thing is that... that with the harbinger, it's centered not just on ancient Israel. It's centered on, there were two Israels, north and south. There was the northern kingdom called Samaria or Israel, and there was a southern kingdom called Judah. The center of the harbinger is the northern kingdom. The nine harbingers appear in the last days of the northern kingdom, okay? It involves both, but it centers on that. Or people like Copeland, t terrible people, false teachers, the false prophets Jesus warned would come in the last days. When you do that... You discredit any validity to your own ministry that God may have given you when you associate with people like that. First Corinthians chapter 5 tells us not even to be associated with false brothers. There are other problems. He has gotten on board with a lot of crazy things and crazy people, including Sid Roth. Sid Roth has promoted one deception... I, I, I looked at uh, uh, CNN yesterday, and they said this whole phenomena, the blood moons, some are thinking it's the end of the world. Others are saying, take your money out of the banks. The dollars are going to be obsolete. Others are saying, Oy vey, the bomb, Iran, are you Meshuga? Are you crazy? <laughs> well, I have the man that is going to answer the question as to what is going on. Is this it? Is it what CNN said it might be going on? His name, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, best-selling author of two books. Uh, uh, one is called The Harbinger. Many of you have read it. The other is The Mystery of the Shemitah. But I want to find out his best spiritual assessment of what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. Any of you interested? Yeah. Me too. Okay, now I know that you are going to... I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, by the way, ahead of time. I believe that I, 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 I am going to push my friend, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, to move into a spirit of revelation 
I'm going to push myself to move into a spirit of words of knowledge and healing. I believe it's going to be a combination of the prophetic word and the miracles of God. What more could you want except maybe Jesus is here now? <laughs> but uh, Jonathan, a couple terms I, I, I want to get straight uh, from your two books. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, what, is, what are uh, the harbinger and what is the mystery of the Shemitah? <clears throat> the harbinger is an ancient mystery. It's the, what happened in the last days of Israel, ancient Israel, before judgment came. Nine harbingers or prophetic signs, warnings, uh, things to come, appeared in the land. And they were warning Israel. Israel rejected them and they were destroyed. The amazing thing or the stunning thing or the scary thing is the same nine harbingers of judgment that appeared in the last days of ancient Israel are now reappearing on American soil. Some have appeared in New York City. Some have appeared in Washington, D.C. Some have involved the president of the United States. They are happening specifically, exactly, and continuously. And since the harbinger came out, they have not stopped. They have continued to manifest. This is a warning sign of a nation in danger of judgment. And out of that comes the Shemitah. The Shemitah is a mystery from the Bible that goes back over 3,000 years. And that is that God gave it to Moses on Mount Sinai. He said, every seventh year, you will have a Sabbath year, no working, no sowing, no plowing, all that. And on the last day of that year, and that year is called the Shemitah, on the last day of the Sabbath year, every seventh year, comes Elul 29 on the Hebrew calendar, day of wipe out all financial accounts, wipe clean, debts wipe clean, everything's wiped clean. This was to be a blessing. But when Israel turned away from God, the Shemitah turns from a blessing to a sign of judgment in the days of Jeremiah. I, I, I know when I, when I read about it, when I'm just reading the scriptures, I look at it as blessing. And it wasn't until you pointed out other scriptures that it depends on how the nation is doing. It even says that in the Torah, when it's given, it says that if you don't do it, here's what's going to happen. The, you'll be removed from the land, but the land will rest for, for all the years it didn't rest. So it becomes a sign of judgment concerning a nation that has known God, that has turned from God, that strikes the blessing sustenance, the financial realm, the economic realm of that nation. And the big question is, could this still be in effect or could it manifest this pattern that God gave? And the amazing answer is yes. It has been manifesting throughout our lives every one of us has been affected by it. It has given the determination, the timing of the greatest crashes in Wall Street history, the rise and fall of economies, the rise and fall of nations, even the rise of America and what could be the fall of America. It even gives the, the exact timing of events down to the day, the hour and the minute. And it actually also gives the parameters of end time events. He is hyper charismatic. Now I'm charismatic. He's hyper charismatic. He of, is of that school that confuses spirituality with mysticism, emotionalism, psychobabble. That's Sid Roth. Jonathan Kahn should not be partners with people like that. Unfortunately, by doing that, he has caused honest Christians to misunderstand where he's coming from. Because he uses the hermeneutics of replacement theology, People suspect, like yourself, is he replacement theology? He's a sincere brother who lacks discernment and does not have good exegesis. But he's not a bad person. And what he's saying, that America and the West did not learn the lessons of September 11th, he's absolutely correct. In any event, that's my response to the question. God bless and thank you. from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, 
at the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast, Shadows of the Beast, how the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is, that is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.